Well, hello everybody. It's insane to see how many people came to my masterclass. Uh, well, I'm gonna explain my track Chances today, um, which I made like, well, it released like five months ago, and uh, yeah, support has been crazy, so I thought it would be fun to explain this one. Um, I'm, I'm curious, how many of you guys are English in this in this room? Please raise your hands up. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, I'll talk English. Uh, well, for the ones who don't know this track, I'll play it. Hold tight and don't let go of the night. I'm keeping you close. We're the radio edit, so it's a bit different, but you can hear what it sounds like. Um, the first thing I did when I started this record was uh, make the chords. That's, that's what I almost always do. So I, I just start with making chords and uh, with a really basic sound, almost in a preset. You guys all know Silent One, I guess. And then I start with an inner preset and, and tweak a little bit on it, and then I make these chords. So yeah, that's just, I, I just do it from the top of my head and then I change a few things. Uh, I can show you guys later how, how I start a track or something, but this is, th these are the chords that I started with and then I started with this sound and that's basically just an inner preset which I made like this. Uh, this is uh, a few voices. I think there are a lot of, oh, there's a filter on top of it. So if I take that off, it sounds like this. It's not nice for your ears, but then I add a low pass on top of it and, and change the polyphony. That, that's basically the sound. Sometimes I, I switch off the retrigger for the effect. It sounds a bit warmer. So that's basically the sound, and um, at this version, oh yeah, the vocal's not in this project because uh, um, when I put a vocal in my track, I do that afterwards, normally, because I don't want it to uh, go through the chain from my master because sometimes it sounds better when you just put it on top of the whole file in a, in a new project, so I'll, I'll show you guys that later. The guitar is actually a melody I made. Let me check if I can find it. Um, I made a, the guitar. It's a real uh, guitar played by a friend of mine. So I made the melody with a really shitty <laughs> guitar plugin. Uh, let me check. Well, it's somewhere. <laughs> uh, I made the melody with this one. Uh, Dynamic Guitars, which is a free plugin, really cool to start things with. Then I made that melody. Well, 
That's what I made, and then I sent it to a friend of mine, and I, I asked him, like, can you play this on a real guitar instrument? So I kind of used him like a synthesizer. Um, and yeah, then he sent this back, which sounded really cool. And then I just re-looped it and put a few effects on it, uh, equalize it. Uh, filter, but the filter is uh, working in a project on an automation clip, so you'll see that later, and the reverb, of course. It's not really much, but just the little things that, yeah, that I tweak. So that's basically the first part of the break, and then the vocal comes in. I, I made this track without a vocal, so I left really uh, much room to keep it for a vocal. So that's what I did and uh, yeah, I didn't really make a, like a melody in a break or something because I wanted the vocal uh, on top of it. Okay, so later there, there are some claps. Uh, uh, almost everybody knows the cashmere drop claps, I think. So I just add them really soft for the effect and I added a, oh yeah, this one is just a bass. Uh, a bit side-chained. I use this plugin. I don't know if you guys know it, but I just uh, found it out. It's from FL itself, and it's called Mini Synth. It's really, really simple, but yeah, if you want just basic sounds, you can easily use this plugin, and I made this bass in it. And side-chained it a little bit. It's not 100% on. So it... it kind of gets that like wavy vibe. And together with the claps and I added a little kick, like a real drum kick. Uh, and then it sounds like this. And right now you can't really hear the uh, guitar anymore because I filtered it out with this one. Uh, so there is more room for the vocal. And it kind of builds up. I have an automation clip on the cutoff from the silent, from this one. It, it, yeah, the cutoff is opening right here. And then I have like a, a, yeah, then you have the build up. Which sounds really weird without a vocal, but yeah. So that's the build up, and I used uh, like plucky sounds that I used in the drop as well. Uh, let's play from here, so the filter is a little bit open. And I made these plugs in uh, Harmor, also a really cool synth from FL itself. Uh, these are almost the same chords as the break chords, but then chopped up and random randomized them a little bit. And the sound came from, uh, let me check, Harmore, and then I, I took a preset, but I tweaked a little bit on it. Um, well, I don't know how, which name it was, but this is the sound. Uh, first, it sounded really, uh, really much like a, like, yeah, different. So I, I made it more plucky. And I added a, a few like effects. <laughs> really weird, but all to fill up the space a little bit, which is basically just a preset from uh, from a massive. Massive. I use massive a lot, by the way, uh, and silent and sometimes synth master. And I layered it with another sound from massive as well. So that's basically the build up. It's not very special or something, but together with the vocal, it, it fits well, I thought. And um, uh, like a riser from a reverse cymbal, which I also side chained. So I really wanted that like wavy vibe in the break. And uh, yeah, just side chained this one. And yeah, we have a reverse cashmere sample as well. 
all for the effects. And yeah, not like really, yeah, it's not, this is just a basic uh, fill from Cashmere, which I chopped up. Everyone knows it, I guess. Uh, and then I added a loop, which I made in another project, but didn't really use it. So yeah, I, I added it uh, from a yeah sample pack, which has like the, um, how do you say that? Like the riffles and stuff. Uh, and I thought it sounded cool. And then we are on the drop. Uh, yeah, which is a bit bigger than everything else. Uh, yeah, so I'll play it once again. Yeah, so that's a drop. And I kind of made the whole idea in one pattern. So I used uh, the plugs I used in a uh, build up again. And put a, a few effects on it, Deep Blue Crusher, um, which does a little bit. It's not fully on, I, I just really soft. And like without everything, it sounds like this. So it doesn't, my effects doesn't do, uh, aren't doing a lot, so. Just add a little bit of high frequencies, cut a little bit of low frequencies. They're not even fully out, but yeah, it worked for me. Uh, sound goodizer, just a little bit, and some reverb with a really short decay. So it sounds like it doesn't have a long uh, decay, so that makes it really, yeah. Still dry, but still a little bit reverby. And the sidechain I use a lot. Uh, this one I, I made my own preset. Everybody can do that. I call it uh, Nesto sidechain. So yeah, that's basically the effects on this one. And that's the bass. Uh, and instead of going up. Uh, like everybody, like every chord is going up, like, but I thought, yeah, a bass, if it's going this high, it's not really that nice bass you want to feel in a track anymore. So I lowered it one octave, so you can really feel it. By the way, if, if there are some questions or something, just raise your hand up and I'll, I'll, I can answer it immediately. Yeah, that's the bass. I, I already explained the bass in another master class. Uh, I think this one is a bit different, but the bass is like, uh, once it was a preset, but I tweaked it, and then I saved a new version of it, and then I tweaked it again, and like it evolves a little bit uh, every time. I EQ'd it a little bit. I, I really like the tick on the bass. You hear a little bit, so I, I wanted to boost that a little bit. Um, uh, also side chain, same side chain as the other ones. And this is like the um, high version of the bass, just the high frequencies. Just to give it more body. Uh, And that one is going up instead of the sub. So the bass is going down here and this one's going up. And together with the chord sounds like this. So that's almost already the like the down layer of the whole track. Uh, I added some chords. So yeah, that I think that was just uh, uh, yeah, it was from vandalism, and I tweaked it a little bit. And yeah, just everything is added for the effect. Not everything has to like have a big part in the whole track, but just the little things I added to fill it up. 
And this is just a plug sample which I used in uh, the track together with Martin Garrix as well, uh, We. Uh, but I layered it in that track. So, uh, yeah, this is just for the effect again. Uh, I'll give these weird names to my samples, so... <laughs> uh, and this is the Bouncy Bob synth. <laughs> Changed a little bit, but really short notes just to, like, have the white noise of the synth. I, I could have also used just, a, like, a little white noise for this, but I chose to do this one. It, it sounds horrible when you hear it like this, but... A little plug. I think it came from a preset pack from drum and bass. Change it a little bit. This is a plug from Tetris. I don't know if some of you guys know the track. It's, it's really old already. And yeah, like every everything is like EQ'd a little bit different, so you get that. So when, when you all hear it together, every sound has its own yeah, quality. And now we're at the top lead. Uh, everything together sounds like this. Yeah, that's it. I really wanted to make the top lead really, also like the break, really wavy and stuff. So I added these, I think it's a little bit Indian or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I thought it was cool. Uh, the sound is from Nexus. And, yeah, Nexus. It's just a, a pan flute from a preset pack. I don't know which one. I think it's, yeah, it's the dance piccolo. And, um, yeah, this is just one layer, but I think it's the most important layer of, of the whole drop. And I add an OTT on it. Uh, yeah, I just really like the effect of OTT. You should really download it. Also free plugin, I think. And it gives a really cool effect. Yeah, it's really cool. And then I added some white noise with the lead again. I just made it in three times OSC and uh, selected all the noise and sidechained it and only left this part. I don't know why I, oh, I just, yeah, put it softer in a compressor. Uh, and this one is also a really important layer for, for the top lead, which is in silence. I think I made it from an inner preset. It's, it's just basically a saw with some white noise, I guess. Oh, uh, and it's also a pulse. Well... And the white noise is really, really uh, low. Because the effect I put on it, uh, if you have a lot of white noise on top of it, it will distort really quickly. So I, I wanted it to be really low. I think the, yeah, the most important effect on this one is the hardcore plugin which I, which I use a lot uh, I, I have um, like this preset called it yes because I like it and um, yeah it distorted the sound uh, it, it makes it sound a little bit like a guitar or something but different so I, I liked it a lot it's basically yeah I think it's a guitar plugin but I, I use this random stuff on things that doesn't even belong on that place. And that, yeah, that's basically almost a top lead, I think. Don't know which one this is. Oh, that's just a, a little tick. I think I made it also from in it. It's just a white noise, little white noise. Uh, yeah, which, which is a ticking sound for for the punch. So yeah, that's basically what I made in one pattern. I like to work in one 
pattern, just make a hold rope ID because you have everything. You can hear everything uh, immediately. So that's basically, and then I have some uh, other layers as well, which I decided to put on on the end. Oh, that's just, oh, wait. Yeah. It's just also to fill it up, this sound I used it in the build up too. It sounds shitty right now, but yeah. And I think this one is also important. Bouncy Bob synth, but really soft, so it's just for the effect. And I think what's, what's really important for this uh, drop is uh, the glide function. Uh, I switched on, let me check. I can show you guys easily in silence. This one. So basically I, I had this sound and it, it was turned on like this. But you don't want it to, you don't want the notes to overlap. Uh, so, like, I, I made these notes and I overlapped them because I wanted to glide them over into each other. So, uh, then I, I switched on this function. And, yeah, it's really cool because then your notes really glide over into each other and, yeah, you, you get your synth a little bit to talk or something. Uh, w yeah, which makes a really cool effect. Mm, yeah, that's basically the first part of the drop. I don't have claps in the first part because I want it to hit really hard. Just added a little crash too on the second kick from Cashmere. And on the second part of the drop, I have this little kick, uh, which is basically just, just a bass drum, which I, I put here for the effect. Uh, sounded cool to me. And here it's again. Uh, and at this part, all the claps come in as well. I think it's uh, it's three layers, yeah. Uh, it's this clap I like a lot. I haven't put any effects on it. I think it's a little bit pre-shifted and that's what makes it, yeah, sound a little bit realistic, I think. So when you clap, when you clap with a really big group or something, nobody is gonna clap on the same time, you know? So, I, I, yeah. Everything is gonna sound a little bit different and that's what makes it a little bit realistic. Uh, this clap too. So it starts a little bit earlier than the kick hits in. So that's what makes it uh, pre-shifted. And another clap which isn't pre-shifted. Also, it, yeah, everything is really basic. Uh, those are the claps, and on the second part, I have the cashmere claps coming in as well. Uh, which make oh, I have another layer, uh, which is a cashmere clap. Um, also, it, it should have been pre-shifted, but I put it just on the kick, so uh, you get this when you layer a few claps, you get this vibe from a big group which claps. So yeah, those are the claps, uh, and then the third part of the drop, I add in some hi-hats. Which is which basically a loop which I chopped up, and I haven't got any effects on it. Uh, let me check. Another little effect. Um, some white noise at the, at the third part of the drop. which are side chains, um, which, yeah, makes your track a little bit more, uh, gives your track a little bit more body. And a uh, little percussion thing I use in a few tracks. 
which I made from a few samples together and rendered it and made it kind of a uh, yeah, signature thing. It sounds a little bit like a, a clock ticking sound or something. Uh, and I added some chords uh, at the third part. Which is basically also almost an init preset. It's just a saw with this function. And I, yeah, I put a few effects on it, EQ'd it a little bit, uh, chopped out the low frequencies and uh, cut some high frequencies and of course the side chain. I think in a, in a drop it's really important if, if you use a lot of layering, you, you side chain everything the same way because then it becomes this like, it, it are a lot of sounds but when you side chain them all together at the same way, it, it becomes like one piece. Uh, and of course your mix, you can make your mix louder if you side chain everything because the kick doesn't glitch with everything you have. Um, yeah, I think that's basically the drop. I have some random sounds as well in it, which I made like this, which I made from an init preset in uh, Massive, just tweaks a little bit around and uh, adds some vibrato to it. We, we, yeah, I thought it was nice and random, so I put it in. Um, are there any questions already? I see one there. Oh, yeah, someone's going with the microphone. I got two questions. Yeah. Um, first, uh, which kick drum are you using? And um, second, uh, do you have any tips on how to make the bass line and your melody more bouncy like in your tracks? Okay, so, um, well, I use this kick. This is the kick and, wait. I think I, I sampled it a while ago from another track or I got it in a pack or something. I, I really liked it. It has this like high, yeah, a lot of high frequencies on the kick, but I like it. It's a little bit distorted on the high part. I, I even added a few high frequencies, but not that much. But it's like it's really short, and it works really well with my side chain because it's really my side chain is really short as well. So if you have a short kick, it works really good together. And about the bass, how how do I make them bouncy? Uh, well, <laughs> let me check. This is the bass I used. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't really know how to make them bouncy, but I think when you work really staccato, does that make any sense? Um, like the first part, like the first two parts, uh, don't have the um, uh, how do you say that swing on top of it. So it's really like on the kick, like boom, 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 and here it starts to uh, swing. But the first parts are really uh, jumpable, I think. So when you yeah, do that, it gets really bouncy, I guess. And of course, yeah, your sub, if it's really warm and nice, I think it works really well in the club as well. So does that answer your question? Good, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, and then I have the outro. Oh, I also have a, a chord switch at the end of the, um, of the drop. Because otherwise it will become a, bit, a little bit lame or something. So you have to drop and then at the end the chords switch to another one I haven't used before. So at that part the chords change to, to give it, yeah. To keep it interesting, I think that's really important, otherwise it will become a little bit lame to listen to. Um, so that's a trick I do when I make music. Uh, then you have the outro, which is basically just the same, same thing, but without a top lead. And I have the, oh yeah, uh, later on there comes a whistle in the track. 
uh, which I like to use a lot. Oh, that's not it. So that's the whistle, um, which makes the track really humanic, I think. And then it's a, it's a plugin I use. It's for Windows, I guess. But I think there are a lot of plugins, whistle plugins for Mac as well. Um, yeah, it's really basic, but the sound is nice. And you can adjust the glide on top of it like I used in the other leads. Second break. Like the second break right now sounds really uh, empty because, yeah, I wanted to keep really much space for the vocal. I can check if I have the vocal file somewhere. Um, Brielle. I did this track together with Brielle van Hugel. She's a really uh, talented singer. Uh, I, I have the weirdest name, but <laughs> let me check. Fox, yes. Um, don't know which one it was, but I, I did it in another project file. Oh yeah, this problem. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do this later if someone is interested. But I didn't change a lot. I just added some reverb on it with uh, just a fruity reverb two, I think, and um, equalized it a bit. Just yeah, just use your ears for it and. Then I have this piano, uh, which is uh, true pianos. Which is the preset from the Ember and then Default. And I think I tweaked a little bit on this one as well. So you can just make it more uh, velocity higher or softer. Which are basically just the same chords as the first break, but then with another sound. Then I have a little uplifting sound, which is really short, which is from Cashmere as well. I, I love the Cashmere pack, as you can see. Uh, then I have some snaps from Cashmere. Uh, haven't got any effects on it. Just keep it dry, and then the pluck again. Uh, which are filtered really, uh, really, yeah, they are filtered. And then I have the same chords. And uh, the bass again to make it really warm. Like I start the second part without any bass or something because I wanted the bass to kick in the second part really nice and warm. It's like, it's not really uh, like a, a difficult track or something, but yeah, I really like to keep this one simple. And um, yeah, these are, I think, three layers for the break. Not that much. Ooh. Uh, yeah, second build up, I basically did the same, but I started already with, um, with the snares. And in the first build up, I didn't. So you get this part where everybody can sing along with it. And the snares come later, as you can see at this point. So, but at the second part, I just wanted to keep going. And um, yeah, I, I do a lot of stuff with uh, filters and automation clips to keep everything interested. So, yeah, and I, I added this boom again which you can hear really nice in the club. And bass, these effects again. Uplifters, yeah, it's basically almost the same, but just uh, snares come in earlier. And then uh, at the second drop, I did the same, but then I added these chords uh, underneath it immediately, which I automated at this point. Uh, with a cutoff. Uh, yeah, everything to keep it interesting and not keep it really monotone or something. So 
so yeah, it fills it up a little bit, and basically, that's the track. Uh, also, we have we haven't spoken about the intro. Um, well, this is the intro. And in the intro, I really like to um, not give away too much, but keep it interesting enough to let people keep listening. And uh, yeah, I chopped up the guitar I spoke about earlier from a friend of mine. And uh, I put this effect on it, which you can do in FL Studio, which is basically a volume fade out. But you can do it right here and put it on generic bleeding. So then it yeah makes wait. Then you, you see this part, it just fades it out uh, at end, at the end of every sample. So when I, I don't do that, you hear clicking sounds because it chops it, it stops so quickly. Uh, I guess you don't hear it, but a lot of times you hear it. I I try to work with different kicks in this track, but at the end of everything I, I stuck with this kick. And for the intro, you, you can hear this, uh, which is basically just uh, a plug from Fenders. But you can hear this as well, which is my voice. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain you guys this. It's really embarrassing to show you, but I'm just going to do it. Uh, we, we had this cool assignment. I, I, I study at the Herman Broad Academy. Uh, we had this cool assignment to make something with your own voice. So, or no, I think it wasn't with your own voice. It was like you had to put in animal sounds and stuff. So I made my animal sounds myself. Uh, this is how it sounds. <laughs> so, but at the end I never used it, but I just chopped it up without the effects. It sounds really embarrassing. I get it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just used it for this track, pitched it down a little bit. I'm not going to pitch it up for you guys, but you get what it is. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I used that, had a shitload of uh, reverb on it. And also the sounds which are basically uh, playing the whole track. But nobody, I think nobody really hears this, like the melody or something, but it just gives this like twinkly effects to this. And uh, uh, right. And I added this little top thing, uh, which, is, um, which is just a shaker to give the effect. And I used a uh, Vengeance fill here, really old school or something, I, I liked it, and a reversed thing. And at the end of this, whoop, at the end of everything, uh, the kick stops, and um, yeah, just to give you a feeling that the second part is coming. And then the really nice warm bass comes in. Right, let me check. Which is basically just the same bass as the drop, but then without every layer uh, which is on top of it. I left the uh, high part of the bass. And just some random melody I, I added to it. Uh, oh, that's actually the high part. But not as loud as it is in the, in the drop. And the chords again, but really plucky. Uh, which is massive. A preset which I tweaked on. Um, and yeah, then you have the intro and it, it, it waves into the break actually. So that was this track. Um, I, yeah, I can show more tracks if you want. I, well, <laughs> by the way, Mike Williams is FaceTiming me right now. <laughs> nice. Uh, 
Let me check. Should I pick up? <laughs> Let's do it. Hey, yo! <laughs> I'm giving a master class right now. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> nice. Right, I'll speak to you later, man. <laughs> Yeah, Mike Williams is coming today as well, so you can check him out for sure. What's <laughs> Next, I'll see you later. <laughs> Yo. Uh, yeah, this is a Sunfeld remix. Opening the file right now. Are there some questions again? No? Oh, there's one. <laughs> I'd like to know how you made the chords in the remix. So if you in the uh, in the Sam Felt yeah, remix, yeah, those. I'll okay. show it. Yes, yeah. uh, the chords from the drop, right? Okay, cool. Uh, I think it are like three layers in silent and a bass. Not really special, but it's opening right now. Are there any more questions? No. Nope. Okay. Well, I think you need a bigger room next year. <laughs> it's crazy. Because it's fully packed here. It's man. insane. Well, thanks everybody. Are there any questions yet? Because we got like four minutes left with Mesto here. So okay. if you have any questions, now is the time to See ask. See one them. there. So Mesto, do you use any stereo shapers, or uh, do you uh, use a plugin with uh, already in stereo? Um, well, uh, I use stereo shaper a lot actually. I also use it in this remix. Uh, just to give it that wide effect, uh, which I love. So I'll show you in this remix. I'll, I'll play the remix first for the ones who haven't heard it. Basically, the yeah, just a quick version. Uh, should I just explain the draw because we have? Oh, there's a question. I saw um, you um, you made a track uh, coming home or something. Um, I yeah. don't know where who that is, but uh, I saw um, Dirty Paul made an exact same copy of that. <laughs> are you still going to release that track? But I really I, like I, this. I am gonna release it, but I I can't tell when and it's yeah, but. I, I, I am going to release it, so... You should release all, Mello. You should release all. <laughs> everything you got. Ladies sure. and gentlemen, I think we have time for one last question. Yeah. And then we're going to finish off this amazing masterclass. Cool. Who's got a question? Ah, over there. I'm going to go here. That's so easy. Hmm. Um, can you show the chords of the drop? Yeah, I'll show the chords. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> they're all waiting for that one. <laughs> uh, I'll do this. Um, uh, after this, can we take a picture with the whole group? Oh, that would That'd be, be nice. amazing. Okay, cool. Good one. Okay, so these are the chords. Uh, I also made everything in one pattern again. I, I love to work in one pattern. But I automated it on the um, pitch in silent. Um, it's basically this. And I made this from an inner preset. Again, uh, it's just a saw with eight voices, uh, two oscillators, uh, switched off the re-trigger, which may, makes it sound like this, because without it, it sounds like this. I don't know if you can really hear the difference on these speakers, but it, it really is a difference. Then I have this layer, which is a really uh, 
detuned sound, I guess, just to um, make the sound more, give the sound more body. And this is also almost the inner preset, but with some white noise. And uh, th these are the three layers for the chords. And then I have this bass saw, which is in the mini synth plugin again. So, and everything together sounds like. And then with the pitch uh, automation, it sounds like Wah. Oh, you can really hear it with the side chain on top of it, but that's kind of the chords. Yeah. I think you can go on for hours and hours. Ladies and gentlemen, please show some love Thank and you. make some Thank noise you. for Messo. Thank you.